Pride Month is over. You might have noticed it. Corporations and rainbow flags on every social media account and waving from every rooftop. Well, they did in the West. In the Middle East, company logos remain decidedly heterosexual and rooftops are used in a slightly less supportive way for the gay community. It's almost as if companies aren't really interested in supporting gay people at all. They just want to go along with the prevailing trend to sell more stuff. Although, it does feel like public attitudes in the West are shifting. Pride used to be an unfettered celebration. Now, as Pride shifts its focus from gay rights to other stuff, people are asking questions. Even Just Stop Oil protested against Pride this year, which shows how out of touch Just Stop Oil are. Lube hasn't been oil-based in decades. Police actually did their job for once and removed the Just Stop Oil protest from the Pride March in only 16 minutes, showing that they actually can enforce the law when ideology allows it. Which is a bit annoying because if there's one thing that can actually get delayed without inconveniencing anyone, it's a Pride Parade. Also, the fact that police will only tackle Just Stop Oil if they're disrupting a Pride Parade means that if you're working class and you need to get to work on time, you're going to have to dress your transit van up like a Pride float and wear sparkly sequined hot pants if you want the police to move any eco-protesters blocking the road. But why is Pride faltering? There are a bunch of reasons. It's getting taken over by gender ideologists and kink. It's flooded with cynical corporate money as businesses try to pride wash themselves. And it's even starting to reject the gays and lesbians who should be core to it. I'll look at these reasons in a moment, but first, a bit of context. Pride started in the UK in 1972 and nobody except an Ayatollah could deny that it was necessary. Back in the day, gay people faced horrific discrimination. They were sneered at, refused jobs, represented negatively in the media. They were very much the straight white males of the olden times. It wasn't like now when straight people actually call themselves non-binary or genderqueer to try and muscle in on the gay space and get some oppression points and everyone falls over themselves to have the most up-to-date progress flag, which is tricky as it changes every 35 milliseconds. Here's the latest one, updated to include neurodivergent people, which is appropriate because it gave me a seizure after staring at it for 10 seconds. In the 70s, the right for gay people to exist, to gather in public and to be seen was necessary. Marching was genuinely brave, bottles were thrown at the Pride Parade and they even got abuse from police on the march, who in those days weren't wearing rainbow helmets. And importantly, back in the day, Pride was about adult gay people. It was a child-free zone. I'll come back to this. And the fight for equality worked. Rights started expanding. Gays and lesbians got the right to serve in the military and get married. Employment discrimination was made illegal. Equal rights were enshrined in law. And socially, it became much more acceptable. Equality was, to a certain extent, achieved. But like the mythical guy who killed the dragon but still had the big sword so went around looking for more things to kill with it, Pride metastasized into fighting for other causes. And it got bigger. Bill Clinton declared June to be National Gay and Lesbian Pride Month back in 1999. Even sharks only get a week. And this year, Joe Biden proclaimed June to be Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer and Intersex Pride Month. LG has become LGBTQ+. That TQ+, includes all kinds of fetishists and straight people who have nothing at all to do with homosexuality and haven't been discriminated against. The A in LGBTQIA stands for asexuals. Who's discriminating against asexuals? There's never been a law against not having sex. And what have they got to do with gays and lesbians? Having asexuals represented at Pride is like having a sport at the Olympics called not playing any sport whatsoever. As Douglas Murray said, there's no greater difference in sexuality than between an asexual and a gay man. And a lot of heterosexuals who just have a kink are represented now. Sexual fetishes like adult babies, human dolls, furries, and people who like dressing up as dogs. There's nothing wrong with that, but the only discrimination they face is that they're not allowed on the couch. There is no historical prejudice against men dressing up as puppies. No passage in the Bible that says, Thou shalt not buy a polyester Labrador outfit from Amazon. I think the apostles just thought it wasn't necessary. And now, Pride, led by gender ideology, feels a bit oppressive. It's in schools, it's drilled into us at every turn. Flags line Regent Street as if we've been invaded by a country with a slightly underdressed military and rather ugly women. It all feels a bit forced. You're taking the wrong fucking flag down, mate. At least you know that. 
and there are concerns about gay erasure. And I'm not talking about the band. There's been some friction between parts of the LGBTQQIP2SAA++ crowd in recent years. Carla J, who helped organise the first Pride marches in New York and Los Angeles in 1970, says, LGBTQIA is so broad that it really is difficult to hold together as a front. The inclusion of QTIA plus people has led to some lesbian and gay people feeling sidelined from Pride. Some lesbians feel like they're being coerced into recognising trans women as other lesbians and have been accused of being vagina fetishists for refusing to sleep with trans women, even though they're same sex attracted, not same pronoun attracted. Police were filmed at a Pride march in Cardiff removing lesbians from the march. At the you're, moment, no, I just want to let, make sure. No, yeah, you'll know now. Let me just explain to yeah, you, yeah. and it'll give you some understanding. Yeah. So, at the moment, your march, this group of people, yeah. is causing confrontation between different groups of people. We're lesbians. We're lesbians. Whatever you are pride, at the moment and is causing confrontation. Say that you march yourself. We don't want to do that. We want to be part of that's your choice. So what I'm telling you is to make sure it's safe. We are going to remove you from the road. And I want you to do that of your own accord. I want to, I want to make sure I understand that you are removing lesbians from a like, like LGBT march. Yes, that what is what's doing. happening. Okay, why? Okay, for safety. For, for your safety, for, for my other people's safety. safety. That's why, why I'm you should be able to protect lesbians. You should be able to protect lesbians in the right conversation. So lesbians were kicked off a so-called pride procession whilst the rest of the LGBTQIA2 plus spirit crowd, many of whom will doubtless be heterosexual kinksters, were allowed to stay. There was also a move to include children. Pride originally excluded children because it was about sex, which, unless you're a BBC DJ, happens between consenting adults. Liberal parents now drag their kids, no pun intended, to pride parades and force them to make eye contact with a naked guy's butthole. I don't understand the rationale behind this. I think it comes down to tribalism. Trump says it's bad, so we must do it. But I think that pride should stay adults only. Not because I don't think it's child friendly entertainment to show your nutsack busting out of a lycra swimming costume. It's because pride is a chance for adults to let their hair down and express their sexuality. If they've got toddlers eyeballing them, that's going to cramp their style. It's yet another example of straight people muscling in on a gay space. And pride now includes gender ideology, which has nothing to do with sexual intercourse between adults, but relates to what you identify as, so isn't bound by age limits. Let's hear these people in their own words. <laughs> As Maya Angelou said, when people show you who they are, believe them. Another thing that's been noticeable this year is that some corporations have taken a hit from supporting Pride. Corporations didn't get on board with Pride back in the day when Pride actually needed their support. It was seen as too controversial and corporations just wanted money, not controversy. Now that the battle has been won, they're all over Pride, virtue signalling by pretending to smash down doors that have already been opened. So Coca-Cola sponsor Pride events in London, but do you think they do the same thing in Uganda where it's actually needed? And corporations give huge amounts of money. 40 companies, including United Airlines, Tesco and Coca-Cola, paid up to £240,000 each to have their brands splashed throughout London Pride Parade. But it's the new elements of Pride that mean it's starting to backfire for them. Bud Light is a weak beer designed for frat boys to drink in the sun with a baseball cap on, watching sports and shouting, DEFENSE! For some reason, a marketing exec at Bud Light thought that these people would identify with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. It was about as popular as using Andrew Tate to advertise tampons. 
Bud Light's parent company lost $27 billion in value. And after more than two decades as America's number one beer, Bud Light has slipped into second place. They can't even give it away. Ironically, the traditional customer base of Bud Light is actually slowly transitioning due to increasing obesity, which raises estrogen levels in men. Maybe Bud Light were just ahead of the curve on this one. And Target, which is a sort of Marks and Spencers type chain in the States, went big on pride. Flags and rainbow clothes are standard, but the campaign came unstuck when they also stocked tuck-friendly transgender swimsuits that help you shove your junk where it can't be seen like a sumo wrestler and pride clothes for children. Parents were furious that Target was literally targeting their kids, so Target moved the pride display to the back, which then infuriated the rainbow people. Target managed to alienate everyone and lost $15 billion off their market capitalization. But it wasn't just American companies coming unstuck. DIY store Wix drew backlash for pushing gender ideology. The chief operating officer, Fraser Longden, seems to think he's running The Guardian instead of a shop that sells hammers and nails. He said that anyone who wasn't on board with gender ideology was a bigot who wasn't welcome in their stores, and that 90% of the British public were just slightly ignorant. It shows how out of touch corporate elites are. Most Wix customers are too busy worrying about keeping their kids fed and a roof over their heads to do an open university course in gender studies and most Brits reject gender ideology anyway. Wix really missed an opportunity by the way. They could have launched a range of saws and chisels for DIY gender reassignment surgery. So why do corporations fly the flag for pride when it's becoming such a divisive issue? It's to maintain ESG scores. ESG stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. They're supposed to show that an organisation is behaving ethically. A lot of money is invested in ESG funds because a lot of investors want their money to do something good. If a company wants to access this funding, they need to get a good ESG score by showing that they're doing good across environmental issues, for example by recycling their waste and using renewable energy, across social issues, so ensuring plenty of diversity training and funding pride parades, and governance, by making sure there's plenty of diversity represented on management boards. It's not just a corporate virtue signal, it's to get easier and cheaper financing. Like everything that's tried to create a utopia though, ESG is awful and is destroying everything. For example, the reason that Netflix shows are so bad is that they focus on crowbarring in as much diversity as possible, instead of focusing on making something compelling. Good content doesn't improve the ESG score, artificially diverse content does. And that Titanic sub-company bragged about getting rid of middle-aged white men, when given the high stakes they should perhaps have been hiring based on merit. ESG doesn't even reflect genuine ethics. You'd think that Tesla would have a high ESG score because it makes the electric cars which are going to save us from a future of warmer weather and fast convenient refueling or whatever seen as bad. But Tesla has a lower ESG score than Chevron, an oil company, and Philip Morris, a tobacco company, because they have things like diversity schemes and trans inclusivity training. I'm going to do a video soon on the poison that is ESG, so subscribe if you want to see that. So these companies aren't supporting pride because they believe in it. Companies don't believe in anything except making money. They're doing it so that they can get access to investment. You're right to be cynical about corporate sponsorship of Pride. And remember that the original core values of Pride were supposed to be diversity, inclusion and equality. There's no diversity of opinion allowed to the point that lesbians are removed from the Pride Parade. It's not about equality as gender ideologists are prioritised over everyone else. And when they say, we're coming for your children, they're being inclusive in the wrong way. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it and subscribe. And if you want to support me making these videos, consider becoming a Patreon. From as little as £3 a month, you can give me money, which will definitely boost your ESG score. And you get access to special content and stuff. Okay, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kears. Bye. Bye-bye.